In these days, people cannot tell the difference between a gift and also an anointing. In this episode, we'll be looking into some of the differences between a gift and anointing. Greetings and welcome to New Dawn Ministries. TV. So tonight we'll be talking about the differences between a gift and also an anointing. You know, in some of the churches, those churches are sustained by a gift. But you'll quickly realize that a gift is not enough to sustain a ministry or a church or a movement. But you need an anointing of God. And it takes an anointed man and woman of God to recognize that a church or a minister is operating under a gift or an anointing. Now, I want you to go to the book of Proverbs, chapter 18. We'll be reading verse 16. It's an interesting verse, and this is what it says. It says, A man's gift makes a room for him and brings him before great men. A man's gift makes room for him and it brings him before great men. Hallelujah. And there are two people who are mentioned in this verse. The first person operates in a gift and the second person operates in an anointing. And this shows you the dimension um, between a gift and an anointing. When you are gifted, rooms are open for you. And that's the purpose of a gift. A gift is not bad, but you need to understand that God has called us to transcend operating from a gift to operate from an anointing. So a gift brings men or women before great men or great women and those are the second uh, the, those are the second person the second person is a great man so a great man is a man who is anointed and a gifted man is a man who needs access so a gift gives you access but a great man or a great woman ushers in a gifted man let me, let me repeat that a gift only opens doors for you and presents you before great men. But an anointed man or an anointed woman is the one who ushers in the one who is gifted because they are great. Hallelujah. So, in fact, that's the first difference. Now, let's move on to the second difference. A gift is natural by nature. You know, a gift is a natural gift. A gift is native. It's something that is natural. But on the other hand, an anointing is supernatural. And the fact that the gift is natural, it means a, when someone is operating in their gift, those who are receiving a gift will be inspired and, um, and they will be uh, moved. They will be impressed. They will give an applause. However, those who operate in a in an anointing, um, because the anointing is supernatural, they will be transformed and also the yokes will be broken. And this is a second difference between a gift and an anointing. Number three, a gift impresses everyone, but an anointing transforms only those who demands it. Let, let, let's, let's unpack this. So everyone who receives a gift will be impressed by the one who's performing the gift. Everyone can be moved. Everyone can be inspired. But when it comes to an anointing, an anointing works slightly different. An anointing can operate in a room, in a church, in a movement, but only certain individuals in the audience will receive the impact of the anointing because there is a demand for that anointing. You know, the Bible tells us that Jesus could not do mighty works in his hometown because people lacked faith and also people undermined who he was. They could not receive Jesus in the office and in the identity in whom he was. And because of that, they failed to receive the healing and the miracles. 
Hallelujah. In other words, because of their disbelief, they could not receive what Jesus carried. Did G- Does that mean that Jesus was less anointed? No, 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 no. He was extremely anointed. However, the anointing that was upon Jesus was limited by those who were receiving the anointing. So when someone operates in an anointing, the, uh, the audience ought to demand and pull the anointing that the man of God or the woman of God is operating in. However, when it comes to a gift, a gift can impact everyone in a, in, in a sense that it can only inspire them, it can only move them, it can only impress them. But the yoke-breaking anointing, when it comes and when it flows, either from a praise and worship leader or from a preacher, I tell you right now, it can only impact those who are hungry and those who are demanding from the ministry of the anointed man or woman. Number four, a gift can be perfected through practice and training. However, an anointing can be grown through devotion. Hallelujah. A gift can be perfected through practice, um, um, uh, through training. Um, but when it comes to an anointing, God can increase the capacity of your anointing, but he only increases it if you're totally devoted unto God. In other words, when you come and you set time and you connect with God in fasting, in prayer, in worship, all of those important spiritual disciplines, they really increase the capacity of your anointing. Last week we spoke about external anointing and internal anointing. In fact, when you increase the capacity of your internal anointing, that will impact the scope and the size of your external anointing. However, when it comes to a gift, a gift, if you don't use it, you actually lose it. L- let me repeat that. And when I, mean, when I say lose it, I mean it becomes less effective. But the more you use your gift, the more it gets perfected. Remember, a gift is still good. A gift is necessary. In fact, all of us are born with a gift, but not all of us are anointed. So all of us are born with a gift, and all of us, it is important that we enhance the gift that God has given us. So if you want to enhance a gift, it is important that you practice it, and it is important that you give yourself time to be trained in it. Number five, you will never lose your gift, but the anointing can be lifted from your life. A gift, you are born with it. A gift is there permanently until you die. You know, when God gives you a gift, he gives it to you and it is yours forever. But the anointing is conditional. Um, It depends on your lifestyle. If your lifestyle pleases God, the anointing will increase from glory to glory. But if there is a sin, if you displease God, if you are disobedient, um, God has a right to lift the anointing that he has given you upon your life. Number six, you are born with your gift. However, you grow into an anointing. Hallelujah. So when you are born, as I said, um, um, God just gives you a gift from birth. However, when it comes to an anointing, an anointing, you are not born with an anointing, but you grow into the stature of the anointing that God has for you. Now, a gift is actually an indicator in terms of where God wants to anoint you in. If you're a gifted singer, understand that God intends to anoint you in a ministry of uh, singing. If you're a preacher, God intends to anoint you in a, in, a, in, a, in, a, in a ministry of preaching. So a gift is an indicator of where God actually wants to anoint you in. But remember that a gift, you are born with it, but the anointing of God, you grow into it. Hallelujah. Number seven, a gift can run in a family line while an anointing is imparted from a leader to those whom he leads. A gift can run from a grandfather to a father to a son. A gift can become um, um, generational. Look at the tribes of the Levites. They were gifted um, uh, you know, in the ministry of priesthood. Um, look at the sons of Issachar. These was a tribe who understood they were prophetic in nature 
they understood the seasons and the times. Hallelujah. And that's a gift that was running in that family. And there are many other examples where a gift runs in a family line. In other words, it follows a bloodline. But an anointing is slightly different. An anointing runs from a leader to those whom he leads. Um, in, in the Old Testament, we are told that God instructed Moses and he said to Moses, go and appoint um, 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 70 leaders of Israel. And what I as God will do, I will take a spirit from you, Moses, and I will put it into those 70 leaders. In other words, the anointing that runs in Moses, I will take it and I will put it in those whom Moses was leading. So meaning that that anointing was not running um, in a biological line, but it was running from a leader into those whom he was leading. So it is important to understand that the leader who leads you the anointing that is upon him or her can flow into you. Hallelujah. And this is a very important part because sometimes as a leader of a church or a movement, I might think that my biological son ought to inherit my ministry or my church and not necessarily. It doesn't work like that. Hallelujah. Your sons or your daughter might have the same gift as the leader who has found a church, but that does not necessarily and also automatically mean that they will inherit the church that you have established. God will give that movement, if you allow him, to the one who has carried the DNA of the concentration of the anointing that was running in the leader. Hallelujah. Number eight. A gift can be commercialized, but an anointing should never be commercialized. Now, if you are gifted, you can render your gift as a service for a fee. You, you can work for any company. You can, you, can, you can actually commercialize your gift. But when it comes to anointing, things are different. The anointing that you receive from God, you didn't buy it from God. You received it from the Spirit of God. That's why Jesus says, freely you've received and freely you ought to give. When God has anointed you, that anointing can never be, should not, let me say, it should not be commercialized. It should be rendered freely because it's a ministry that God has given you and you ought to operate uh, freely in that anointing. And you cannot put uh, uh, an anointing for sale. Um, 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 so those are the differences between a gift and an anointing. Father, we thank you for this teaching. We thank you that you've given us gifts and you are inviting us that we ought to be anointed in those gifts that you've given us. In the same way as David was anointed by prophet Samuel, when David demonstrated the gift by killing the bear and the lion, uh, while he was a shepherd in the sheep of his father. And there was a moment when he came and he was anointed so that he can occupy the office of the kingship. And I pray that for each and every one of us, we may know the gifts that you've given us from birth because it is those gifts that ought to indicate to us where you desire to anoint us. I give you praise. I give you glory. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Thank you so much for connecting with us. Remember, newdawnministries.tv exists to equip, to inspire, and to enable everyone.